podcast. Also, 42 seconds of logos. You think they showed this much bull before the curtain opened all those times on Broadway? No! They just told you to silence your phones and beepers and sh- and thanked NPR for sponsoring them. Oh, oh, no. No, 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 no. I knew the effects in this movie were going to be sh- Everyone knew that, but it's like the difference between being told a chicken wing is crazy hot and eating a chicken wing that's crazy hot. Nothing can prepare you for this. Also, this movie officially made crawling on all fours toward the camera unsexy in films, in porn, in home movies. Done. Over. Played. Thanks, cats. God damn, this opening is annoying. Between the blaring synth horns, the nightmare fuel of the circling humanoid felines, and the fact that this f***o won't get out of the bag. I'm adding 20 cents for this movie already pissing me off. Also, is that Taylor Swift? If all the cats scattered as soon as Victoria was released, why are they immediately f***ing with her now? I mean, I guess actual cats would do that, so the sin, as always, is cats. Also, he sings, Can you say that your bite is worse than your bark? And dude forgot he was in a movie called Cats. Great, their immediate response to this poor lady cat being dumped in a f***ing alleyway is to brag about how awesome they are. It's like being dropped on the sidewalk outside the house of DJ Khaled. I'm only four minutes in and I need drugs. I need drugs. Stat. Someone bring me all the drugs. He asks if Victoria was there in ancient f***ing Egypt and I'll be goddamned if he can say that he was. I guess jellicles were everywhere in history, but they didn't do shit about making decisions about structural development. Is this a horror movie? This is a horror movie and no one told me, right? Here, I'm going to call Chris to confirm. Hello. Yo, you didn't tell me there was a horror movie before you scheduled it. You know I get triggered by weird cat movements? Damn it, Uncle Jim. I told you to never call me this late, especially after you've been drinking. F*** you, physics. It's Moulin Rouge, but with cats. What the hell is Victoria even doing? I know she's a cat and she found a few of her kind, but these folks are pretty much dickholes, and she should be hiding under that broke-down car back in the alley. Ah, yes, the mousetrap. That classic Agatha Christie play that's about... Wait, I'm not allowed to reveal that twist ending? That has been out for over 60 years. Damn it, I wanted to talk about this much better play that's name-checked here solely for a cat joke, or a reference to it being the longest-running play on the West Side, or whatever, let's move on with this bullshit. They sing skeptical cats, dyspeptical cats, romantical cats, fanatical cats, critical cats, parasitical cats, allegorical cats, metaphorical cats, and they are just literally rhyming now, and rhyming badly. Also, they haven't allowed Victoria to say a goddamn word this entire time. It's almost as if she's being treated like a human female. Could get dangerous. You know, Victoria is taking this completely different environment and getting creeped on by a green-eyed stalker much better than she should be. Cat got your tongue? Do cats use cat idioms? The naming of cats is a difficult matter. Clearly. How else would we have characters named Parbodicans, Swiggums a Bunch, and Jim's Liquor in this movie? Also, mother these Jellicles, man. They're pompous, self-important ass balls that make every f***ing thing super dramatic. What the f*** is up with this cemetery? There are gravestones all willy-nilly everywhere. Or if it's the place of a dude that makes the tombstones, why do they all have writing on them already? Why do they have human hands? Everything else is CGI'd to f***ing back. Why would they leave their hands as human? And don't get me started on the buttholes. I'll get to those soon enough. Deep and inscrutable. God, 50% of this movie so far is pure adjectives. Name. 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 This spoken word number is somehow even more infuriating than the big stupid show tune at the opening of the movie. The director said, let's have your character f***ing juggle apples like a true asshole. Setting aside the lunacy of cats having f***ing celebratory balls, what's this all about? How many jellicles are there out there? How do they pick the leader or representative? Who sends the evite about the ball every year? Who books the venue? Who makes the punch? And jellicles ask. Christ, I'm so jellicle sick jellicle with this jellicle word. Jellicle that a jellicle if I hear it. Jellicle one more jellicle time. Jellicle I'm gonna punch jellicle someone in the jellicle testicles. Heavy Leo. Francesca Hayward is a tremendous ballerina, but clearly isn't trusted as an actress enough to get more than two lines in the first 15 minutes of this movie. How will they be chosen? By singing the song of themselves, of course. Oh, of course! Why didn't I know that? Duh. Also, the song of myself right now is horny. These cats in this terrible movie are giving me an interesting boner. Okay, let's talk about the buttholes, or the lack thereof in this movie. Why no buttholes? Have you ever seen a cat? They're proud of their buttholes. They show those f***ing things off every chance they get. To deny these cats their buttholes is to restrict the essence of their catness, and I for one am on Team Free the Butthole. But also, I'd like to point out that all these cats, boy or girl, should have six to eight nipples visible on their abdomens. At least, if we're being anatomically correct. Release the nipple cut! Breaking and entering. Also, what responsible pet owner leaves this raging fire going with a cat running around? Or if the movie's implying that the cat lit this fire, how the does that work? Also, also, they just walked into her home singing about how lazy she is, and she seems cool with it. And that's easily the most f***ed up thing so far. So Gumby Cat turned the mice into a musical act, fine. 
But Captain Firehazard is here to ruin the fun by pointing out how f***ing dead these mice will be very soon thanks to all the open flames, yarn, cardboard, and such and such. Jeez, this Gumby exposes her cat so much that I think I can see her kidneys. No f***ing way these roaches are in this position when we just saw Gumby Nuts or whatever dance past this a second ago with nothing there. Now train marching cockroaches. She's trying to prove she's not lazy, or at least not lazy all the time, but all she's proving to me is that she has gross ideas. What the f***? Jesus Christ, this movie is obsessed with crotches, man. I thought I was obsessed with crotches, but this movie puts me to shame. With the cockroaches dancing and the mice singing. Whomever decided to give Jason Derulo a British accent in this movie should not only be fired from movies, but from life. This might be the stupidest piece of content ever created. I have subtitles and I'm f***ing lost, man. How did anyone ever understand what the f*** was happening when this was a stage show? Do you think he just got neutered? I don't know if this line was in the original play, but I choose to believe it was added here, just to pour gasoline on the dumpster fire that is this adaptation. Somehow these f***ing cats have been transported to the club from Tron Legacy. Please tell me Michael Sheen is going to show up and make at least some of this movie watchable. What kind of diner closes for the night and has no physical door, but rather a locked fence gate that animals and small humans can fit through? And leaves the neon on overnight! I can't play the music for you here, but Rum Tum Tugger here does more runs than Ariana Grande covering Christina Aguilera doing a high schooler's karaoke version of Mariah Carey. That makes no sense. What kind of pin that is crooked twitches? A safety pin? A bowling pin? Clothes pin? I realize this musical has been joked about for ages, but it also ran on Broadway for ages, so... Is the LSD ingesting stage musical loving crowd just way bigger than I realized? She used to be the star of the windmill. And she went with McCavity. No, she lives on the wasteland. Oh, God, does any of this sh make sense? You could tell this story to preschoolers, and even those four year olds would be all, what the hell is this? Sh oh, no, look what the cat dragged in. Guess what I was thinking, Rebel. But regardless, movie wants to ride the coattails of James Corden's epic vocal performance in the Emoji movie. How does the Gumby cat not know who McCavity is? Even if she's new on the scene, the Jellicles would totally warn her about him. Hey! That's a balls joke right there, folks. This movie is officially lazier than a Shrek sequel. I swear to God, this song is all about how f***ing fat this cat is. I honestly already tried pouring acid on my eyes, folks. Not enough damage. Ineffable! The hell? Is that a Harry Potter spell? Did that cat just apparate? The hell? Oh, God, f***ing these staining hell bitches. Another song where a new cat introduces his or herself. This entire musical is like that Dr. Doctor scene from Spies Like Us. Mongo Jerry and Rumble Teaser. I'm not exactly sure how much cocaine was in existence in the late 70s and early 80s, but I do know that it was all used to make this script happen. So far, the Calico twins are the most boring new cats we've met. And that's saying something. But also, is the girl Calico Taylor Swift? Why the hell do all the homeowners in this city leave their windows wide open? This is worse than the humans in The Secret Life of Pets. Giving a pussy a pearl necklace who's never been less sexy. A cat spins on its ass on the main serving plate on the dining room table. Sin for sanitation reasons. Why the humans making this delicious looking roast, then leaving it out presumably on the f***ing floor for the cats to consume? How the hell did Mr. Mistopheles find Victoria? All the cats scattered after McCavity showed up. But there's no way he could track her down in this rando's house. God damn it! I thought you'd miss the arrival. What's arrival? Of old Deuteronomy. Holy sh! Victoria arrived on the most important day of all Captain. And of course, everything's happening on the same fing night. I'm determined to win, and I prefer my competition chained up. So McCavity is eliminating his competition before the competition can even begin? That's cheating. Meow! Seriously, this is fing bullshit, man. It's a movie about cats, but somehow this one guy can teleport like Nightcrawler? Eat my ass, movie! Eat my jellical fing ass! P.S. I hate you. Who are you? And here's another song introducing a new character. Goddamn f***ing what the what? Was writing for Broadway really this easy back in the day? You can't just say Thames because it rhymes with Ames. It's, it's the River Thames. British people. Where have you been? Why the hell does this f*** even care? I know he has an Insta boner for Victoria, but she literally just arrived hours ago, if not less. Shouldn't he be more worried about the rest of the Jellicles? Old Deuteronomy is shrouded in London fog, even though the lead characters just a few feet away have it perfectly clear. How is Victoria singing along with this elegy when she has no clue who this old bat is? Why is old Deuteronomy furred out like a silverback instead of a cat? This circle dancing with no plot advancement goes on for some time. <laughs> plot advancement. Synchronized tail wagging. Why does one cat guy have red overalls when all the other cats are pantsless? I know Victoria's hot and all, but why was she immediately accepted into the Jellicle clan? She has no bona fides, and they've been bragging about how exclusive they are during this entire f***ing movie. Oh, she's wearing a fur coat? That raises even more questions. No one will be seated while Jason Derulo and some other rando does some breakdancing shit for no reason at all, and f*** my life, I cannot get this movie out of my brain. This dance party is really moving... 
Oddly, this is the first recorded orgasm Dame Judi Dench has ever committed to film. Jennifer Hudson is an immense talent, and this is the most famous song in the show. But I'm just too darn distracted by the line of snot running from her right nostril straight down over her lip. So wait, the classic memory song is sung by the spurned glamour cat about her time with the Jellicles? Sorry, I haven't seen this play in a long time. I thought that song was about old love and important sh Deuteronomy is hosting the most important event for Jellicles of the year, but she has time to pop away and watch Victoria serenade the outcast cat? Dude, you've been here for like a couple hours. Maybe there's a seedy underbelly of the Jellicles you don't know about. Maybe they're just waiting to offer you as a sacrifice to the Jellicle moon later in the night. You don't know. Earlier she sang that Jennifer Katzen should be happy because at least she has beautiful ghosts, but now she's singing about how she, the singer, will dance with beautiful ghosts, but never in the song did Jennifer Katzen give permission for that. I'm just going to literally type out and read the lyrics to this song so you can see what a Matrix Architect level of meaningless dribble it is. The moments of happiness. We had the experience but missed the meaning. An approach to the meaning restores the experience in a different form beyond any meaning we can assign to happiness. The past experience revived in the meaning is not the experience of one life only, but of many generations. Not forgetting something that is probably quite ineffable. I mean, what the f*** is that cockery? Christ! Would you like to see me make the Jellicle choice? I'm pretty sure Deuteronomy is hitting on Victoria here. Not that I would blame her, but it seems like a bold strategy for someone you just met. I've never played the Egyptian before. That's racist. Cross -port. The hell? Why would cats say cross anything for luck? That is a purely human thing to, you know what? Yes, cats don't talk in real life, but here they do, and English is fine, I don't care. But these casual feline versions of human idioms and colloquialisms are maddening. He's the first Jellicle contender we've seen perform for old Dendrotomy. And he's just listing off all the ways his life has been miserable. It's a furry musical version of that Seinfeld episode where George tries to out Misery and Andrea Doria's survivor for an apartment. This is cheating. Unless Make Me Pissed Off Elise here is going to wave the wand for every performer, this is f***ing cheating. They're meowing as applause, but studies show cats really only meow around humans and are probably just trying to imitate the sounds of babies, who they've noticed for generations get immediate attention when they cry. Around each other, they might purr, or if they're fighting, they might cry or yell, but you almost never see two cats pass in a humanless hallway meowing hello as they go by. Also, she lifted her leg into the air to signify either her own enjoyment of the performance or at least that it was now appropriate for the crowd to react to the performance. Either way, that's a weird signal. I'm done with this f***ing guy. First of all, he shouldn't be able to transport wherever he wants at will. But even if he can, he should just do it several times within the span of a few minutes and not drag this shit out for a couple days. Why didn't he grab Gus earlier when he was backstage licking the water before he performed? Roxanne! Jesus, tap dancing Christ, I would pay a thousand dollars to make this just a ballet like the Nutcracker, but the movie insists on assaulting my eyes and ears with whatever the shit this is. This is as good a time as any to say that this movie and the musical that inspired it has nothing to say. There are no messages, no themes, no symbolism. It's actually culled together from T.S. Eliot poems, which makes a lot of sense given what I've seen so far. But don't come for a message. Don't come for a theme. Just take a shit ton of drugs and come for a trip. Look, I don't know how we got into this train sleeping car, and neither do you, but it bears recognition that these beds are very appropriate for cat-sized cats instead of human-sized humans. Okay, but what is that rope attached to on the other end? Sprinkling catnip on the audience is also cheating. Everyone in this contest is cheating. It's like an American election, only less brazen. Also, I'm pretty sure this is how Tay-Tay gets her audience so hyped up during her concerts. Between Idris Elba, T-Swift, and J-Hud, the studio clearly spent a lot of money on actors that have a total screen time of roughly three minutes. She sings that she knows McCavity cheats at cards, and that's honestly eviler than anything we've seen him do so far. Also, naming the villain McCavity is a little weirdly anatomical and orally fixated. Why not McCankersore, or McCottonmouth, or McHerpeslip? I would f**k every cat in this performance if it would speed the movie up. Also, I would f**k every cat in this performance. McCavity calls himself the Napoleon of crime here in song, and just Napoleon of crime? Napoleon eventually lost and got banished to an island. Is this paw shadowing? Time has come to make the Jellicle choice. If that's the case, and this is all McCavity wanted, why hasn't he been at all the f**king cat balls in his life? Oh, Deuteronomy, if you would. Does a contestant get to decide when the choice is made? We haven't even heard the new girl Victoria sing On My Own yet. He's got so. That is Taylor's only line in the movie. And I'm pretty sure her boyfriend was her dialect coach, because her British accent is as bad as his. I am going to the heavy side layer. So let's say McCavity is successful and wins and goes and gets reborn. What do any of his very loyal henchmen and henchwomen stand to gain at that point? Now, you could argue he's already paid them handsomely, but I would just ignore that argument and send the movie anyway. Look, it was only a bit of fun. I disagree. Have you seen this movie? Mistopolis goes through all the shit he can do in this song, despite the plea from his clan to use his shit to get Deuteronomy back, which he sucks at. <laughs> this goes on for a lot of some time. 
<laughs> Jason Derulo had to get in full body cat makeup just to grimace. The cats are singing, never was there ever a cat so clever as magical Mr. Mistopheles. I guess Mistopheles just needs support like Tinkerbell and Peter Pan to get his magical boner up. He did revive her, but somehow she's not in the basket under the blanket, but is standing behind him because f*** you, that's why. Wow, well, this nuzzle is enough to make Mistopheles ejaculate cards all over the stage. Sky trombones being played by no one. This is the entire movie in a nutshell. The cavity disappears, and now the captive cats start trying to escape. Like, why the f*** didn't you try this any of the five other times he's transported away from this ship over to the city? I guess they're fighting McCavity's goons? Honestly, I can't tell where the cat action is, since this is edited worse than a Marvel fight sequence. At this point, it's apparent that Victoria is stalking this poor soul and should be sentenced to be put down. Sing. Barking orders. Also, the brand new cat brought this lady in here, despite her long years of isolation, and the rest of the Jellicles are cool with that. As she sings memory again, I am very happy that she found a tissue since the last time. The actual best song in the movie comes way too late to win back the audience's favor, which sucks, because I am sure Jellicle Hudson worked her ass off on recording this. And it's a fantastic version of the song, but I and many viewers were already too mad at this point to come around. God, this is a sad pussy. This is the saddest pussy I've seen since my college girl. You are the Jellicle Joy. Damn, show up and sing a sad song and you get the world handed to you on a platter. But Deuteronomy must be part of that pain, right? She's been around for a long time and had to have had a role in the exile of Grizabella. So Memory Girl won the contest and they are going to send her up to the heavy side layer via a hot air balloon? Really? Wizard of Oz called and it doesn't want to sue you for ripping it off. It just wants to make fun of you for being sucky. <laughs> okay, I guess that's it for our antagonist. F it. This movie can eat a bowl of dicks. As they sing more gibberish about the mystical divinity to close out the show, I would like to say this to anyone that ever paid money to see this stage show or this movie, myself included. You got played, son. But how would you address a cat? She asks how I'd address a cat, and based on this movie, I'd throw them in the River Thames as soon as possible. I can't help but notice that when Dame Dench is addressing the camera, the cats in the background have no clue about what to do. So they're totally gonna right? I believe you truly are a Jellicle cat. Oh, f*** a duck lady, she didn't do anything Jellicle, which I know because Jellicle was never once defined by you f***ers. Wait, they're gonna f***? I'm not against it, I just hope they actually show that. Now is the perfect time to check out the BTS podcast. We'll tell you the truth about Jeremy's love of this incredible film and how it left the world a better place. No, no, Danae. Pretty sure he said this one should rot in hell. Oh, I misunderstood. Well, then Barrett absolutely said that this one needs more buttholes. Find out what really happened behind the scenes. Available on YouTube every Thursday at noon. Or check your podcast player for Behind the Sins. Yep. The minister's cat is a lonely cat. The minister's cat is a languid cat. But I'm very badly injured. The wound is beginning to smell a little like almonds. There was me, that is Alex, and my three droogs, that is Pete, Georgie, and Dim. Bow to her, bow to the queen of slime, the queen of filth, the queen of putrescence. Oh, God. That's gonna leave a mark. Who are you? I know you. You make one more drug deal with that idiot Cop magnet of a cousin of yours. I'll cut your f***ing nuts off. Shame. 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 I am so, so sorry for everything that has happened. <laughs> My mother would say, you should enjoy it. One day you'll have to work for a living. No, I won't, Ma. I'm going to be a comedian. <laughs> a black superman. What you're about to see is considered safe. I'll tell you in another life when we are both cats. That's hilarious. Yeah.